So, welcome to another Australian banknote video, everyone. My name is Glenn, and today we're going to be looking at the 1972 $20 banknote. So this one's not in too great a condition, probably. I would classify it as fine. You can hold it up to the light. You can see it has no pinholes, and also there is no tears. Or maybe there's a little one there. So it does have one tear. But as you can see, it actually has a lot of folds. So to actually see the folds, you need to hold it so the light actually reflects off it. So you can see it has a center fold mainly, another fold there, fold here, there, uh, and another fold there. And Lots of other small folds over the years that it had been in circulation. So, when it has so many folds, it actually is quite flaccid. Um, 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 quite, not flaccid, flaccid when it goes through it. Um, it's actually quite stiff still, so it still has that paper crispness on the actual banknote. And with these banknotes, I'm not too concerned about holding it like this because uh, it's pretty well circulated. So the first thing that I get when people come with Commonwealth of Australia banknotes is that these are expensive banknotes. They must be worth a lot of money. Well, basically, no, that's not the case. It does depend on the year. The 1967 is pretty much the most expensive. Uh, the 1966 is pretty cheap. You can pick them up for $20 in this grade pretty much still. Uh, the 1968 and 72 are the second easiest to get. And in a minute, we'll have a look at how much these actually cost. Now, how do I know it is a 1972? Well, basically, you got Philip and Willa. And they started having their signature on banknotes in 1972. And in 1974, they actually changed the banknotes a little bit. They just removed Commonwealth Australia and just put Australia on there. As we see it was this Fraser Coal Banknote. So this is basically the only difference. The Commonwealth of Australia Philip Wheeler Banknotes are actually a lot cheaper than the just Australia ones. Just by a little bit. So... In lower grade like this, they should be pretty much the same value, but if you want an uncirculated one, you're talking about a, probably a 20 to $30 difference, reflecting that there's probably more of these banknotes. So the first prefix that you need to find is the XEV. So these are all in the X as the first letter. And the last is XGY, so this is N. So this is close to it. XGY and XEV. And the XGY also is used on the Australia banknotes. It's the first prefix. So I'm not going to calculate how many banknotes are actually were issued, but it can be quite easily done. So you got actually I might do that now. Let's have a look. Okay, so it's pretty easy to work out. So you got the, the uh, it goes from E to G. So you got E F G. Then you got the last number. So with the E, it's V W X Y Z. So it's five. The F contains all the alphabets. So twenty six. So twenty six million. And because yeah, each one of these last ones gets one million banknotes. And for the G, we have A to Y, which is 25, because Y is the second last. So for the E's, we have 5 million. For the F's, we have 26 million. For the G's, we have 
put back 25 million. I think they might, I don't know the exact numerals, but um, with the Vs, they start at zero most likely. So we've got roughly 56 million banknotes just of this signature combination. And that's a, just a ballpark figure. So let's see how much they actually cost on eBay. Oh, but first, uh, if you're not too familiar, this is actually Charles Kingsford Smith. He was an aviator. He he's playing crashed around I think 1932 near Burma, and they actually never found it. So he's floating around the ocean, and uh, here is most likely air patterns. I would say geometrical features, probably of air currents or whatever. And we have Captain Cook, and on the reverse we have. Uh, Hargraves obviously has some aircraft, so he's probably an aircraft designer. And he was born in 1850 and passed away in 1915. Oh, and I just had a look at Sir Charles Kingsford Smith. Uh, he actually died in 1935. He was born in 1897, so he was uh, about 38 years. 37, 38 years, depending on his birth and death date. And he was quite a handsome guy. Mm. Mm -mm. Anyway, so let's have a look at some values for the actual banknotes. So I've got a few up on my phone. So here I have some values. So we've got some sets, 1972. And as you can see, it is uh, 30... 38 or 33 depending on the one you're pretty much getting just about double value for them and then we have a lot of free banknotes so $60 for 130 what condition are they in so let's have a look uh, yeah they're circulated so they're pretty much similar to the condition I have so those sold for uh, about forty dollars each. Don't worry about the fives. Do those later. Then you got another one. Twenty nine dollars, thirty dollars, twenty five dollars. XFS. Let's have a look at the grade of that one. And as you can see, that banknote is oh, it's got pen on it. So that's a pretty circulated banknote. It's actually harder to tell the grades of these banknotes on this condition, but I've looked at some of these and they're pretty much in a similar grade to the ones I've got, very fine. See, this one's got very fine, a catalogue value, 110. Sold for 37. So we're talking about about third of the value. So we'll take the book value, divided by three. That's basically what you're going to get. So for these banknotes in well circulated condition, you can like this one. You're looking at about thirty, thirty-five dollars. Uh, any in better condition? So good, very fine. Not too sure if that was the best offer, so I won't worry about that one. And people sell these in sets, and they get about double face value. So about forty dollars for the actual banknote. And circulate a hundred dollars in the catalog has 450 wow that's only a quarter which is what I actually would expect it to be so a hundred dollars from circulator for a fine very fine you're talking about 30 35 so really these are actually not an expensive banknote to get and that's it that's it that's basically all the sold ones over the last three months so let's have a look at this one. So if you have any Commonwealth Australia $20 banknotes of Philip Wheeler, these are the actual values you're actually going to get. So, that one actually does look uncirculated to me. You can zoom in. And you can see these have a central thread. That's what I didn't tell you before. They have a central thread, 
and later on actually put a side thread so the thread's actually on the side. So if I put them together, you can actually see the thread. Oh, wait. So you can see the actual threads. And that's because when these get folded in half like that, uh, the thread can actually tear the actual banknote quite easily. So anyway, I hope this actually helps you value your currency. Just because it's old and has Commonwealth of Australia doesn't mean it's expensive. As I've shown here, this banknote's only worth about $30, $35 if you're lucky. Uh, uncirculated, $100 basically. So don't trust what the catalogue says. It's pretty much overvalued. Anyway, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching my video. I'll leave a link down below to Australian banknotes so you can check eBay for banknotes. And uh, have an awesome banknote collecting time. Thank you and bye-bye.